Yo, what's up guys? Today we have a fun video for you. We're going to be installing the Garrett motion intercooler on my 2016 Focus ST. I'm here with Joel. He's somewhere over there. I don't know where he went, but oh, there he is. Uh, so we're going to be installing that today. We also have a couple other things to do to the car. So I did the grill shave and I still have this piece back there. So we're going to deal with that and then we're going to pull the plastic piece off the crash bar once we get the bumper off. Those are the two things we're doing today. Um, we're going to get started by getting the bumper pulled off and then I'm going to kind of show you guys what we're doing as we go on. This isn't meant to be like a strict install guide. So if you're looking for that, that's not this video, but I will be showing you what I'm doing and how I'm doing it. So yeah, let's get into it. All right guys, so the first step that we're gonna do is take off the headlights because we gotta get the bumper off. So that is just two bolts per headlight. There's one up here, one down here that I'm taking off right now. After we get that done, there's a shit ton of other bolts located all around. And I'm not gonna tell you guys like all of them because I honestly don't know all of them. I'm gonna get them all taken out and then we'll get the bumper off. I know for a fact there's the ones on the headlights, there's these ones right here, I think. This one, uh, two more right here. Uh, one, these two right here both have to come out, I believe. And then there's a few underneath the bumper. If you have the under tray on your car, you're gonna have to pull the under tray out. And then, yeah, I don't have an under tray, so it's just like three bolts under there. It'll be pretty easy. So we're gonna get all the bolts taken out and then I'll come back whenever I have the bumper coming off. Okay guys, so I got all the bolts out. There was just an assortment across the top. You can kind of tell which ones you need to take out. And then there's some underneath that I pulled out. Also, there's a few clips that you have to kind of pull out like that. And then the whole bumper kind of just comes off. And then there is the fog light wiring right here. That you just disconnect. And then that's it. There's the bumper taken off, super simple. I'm gonna set this over in the grass real quick. Here's the car without the bumper on it. I'm gonna be removing this plastic crash guard thing because I think it looks better without it. And I'm pretty sure it's just pull tabs. So yeah, there we go. So there's that, a little bit of weight reduction and everything. So I'm gonna figure out what I need to do next because I'm not really sure and then we'll record. I'm pretty sure it's just a couple of clamps for the intercooler and then it's super easy. So yeah, I'll catch up with you guys whenever I figure out what we're gonna do next. Okay guys, so I have just looked and I'm pretty sure it's just a clamp on either side and then this intercooler is kind of held in on these little clips up here. I don't know how well you guys can see that but I'm going to take these clamps off and see if I can pull the intercooler out. Joel's going to record for me while I do that and we'll see what happens. It's like kind of starting to rain so we're going to try to do this pretty quick. I'm going to lift this up. This one? Yeah. There we go, there's the stocking. Uh, the next step is to pull the map, or the map sensor off, which is an eight millimeter, I think. All right, yeah, so that's an eight millimeter. We're gonna do this real quick. Okay, so there's the map sensor bolt. All right, also what we're gonna have to do is figure out where do these bolts line up at? I think they go like right here. So we're gonna pull the intercooler out. Scratch it or anything. I'm gonna put the map sensor into the new intercooler. And that should be as simple as pulling it out of here. Just transferring it over into here. I think this is a little bit of a click. Yeah, Alright, so there's that. I said I can get it to slide. I can do it. I know what I need to do, I just can't do it. So this needs to be moved. Yeah. Right, it's supposed to go like that, but it's too tall. Like that's on the things. And. All right guys, so 
We have tried several times to like get this to fit in. And she said. every time it gets caught on this like piece of metal right here. It's kind of hard to see. And I've literally been trying this for like past 20 minutes, trying to get it to fit in, like trying several different ways. And I'm gonna cut just right across here and take off this little piece of metal and then it should go in. There we go, it's in. Oh shit, it is? Yep. Yep, that's in. You didn't even have to do it. Look, it doesn't even touch the top. Janice. No, dude, like, it wouldn't go in, though. Like, you saw it yeah, not yeah. going in. So, I just cut off this little piece of metal. Like, it's literally there for, like, no reason. I can't see any reason for it. So, I cut that off and then just ground it down a little bit. And since it's bare metal now, I'm going to spray some paint on it so it doesn't rust out. But the intercooler is in there now. All I have to do is put the bolts in which are right here and one on the other side. Connect up the clamps and torque those down and then it'll be in. So I'm gonna pull this back out and we're gonna spray some paint on that exposed metal. So it's kind of a tight space and it's hard to line this up. So, definitely patience is key right here. So, like, I still can't get it to start threading in. So, the, one of the issues is you only have, like, an eighth of a turn with your hand in this position. So, getting it to, like, thread in. There we go. I just got it. It's kind of hard. And then, I'm also going to have to grab a wrench. You can't use, uh, using a socket won't work because this piece of metal right here is in the way. So you're gonna have to use a wrench. It's a 10 millimeter. I'm gonna grab one of those and tighten them. Also, if you have like the ratcheting wrenches like these, like ratcheting spanner wrenches that have like the ratchet in there, that would be great. Unfortunately, I haven't bought tools in the last like five years and whenever I bought tools, I didn't have, or I didn't buy those style wrenches, so. I'm stuck doing this by hand, and it's going to take a while. I also put the charge pipe on. I haven't tightened down the clamp yet. We're going to do that in a minute. But I'll come back to you once I get both of these bolts all the way in. Okay, guys, we got the intercooler in. That boy looks big. Um, just for comparison, here's the stock intercooler. I know I didn't show you how thick the new one is, but it's like twice as thick. You can see it from the bottom. Also, if I hold it up like that, you can see just how much bigger it is. The end tanks are bigger. They're also not plastic, so um, really good quality. The welds are good quality. It feels good quality. Um, so it's in. What we're gonna do is put the headlights back in. Thanks, Joel. Yeah. What we're gonna do is put the headlights back in, um, not put the bumper back on yet, and we're gonna take it for a drive, make sure I don't have a boost leak or anything. And after that, we'll put the bumper back on after I cut the uh, piece I need to cut out of there. So yeah, let's get the headlights back in, and then we'll take it for a quick drive. All right, guys, we're just finishing everything up. We got the intercooler in, clamps connected, the map sensor connected up. Uh, took it for a drive, and we're running full boost, so that's good, no boost leaks. Um, we're just about to throw the bumper back on. We just connected the fog light uh, connector in there. It's on the right side. And basically, the only thing to do now is to lift the bumper up and put it into place. And you kind of just have to line it up. It's kind of tricky. The most important thing, like when you're put, just for putting it on, is these big clips right here. Just make sure those get clipped in, and that will sort of like put it in place for you. And then you can kind of just clip everything else in. I think that's all I'm gonna show of this. I'm just gonna get everything bolted up and then I'll close out the video for you guys. So, let's do that. So we finally have the car all put back together. The intercooler looks super nice. It drives super good. Uh, no boost leak or anything. 
so there it is. Um, I also did the grill shave and cut out that strip of plastic that went across the bottom and took off the plastic off the crash bars, so that's more open. Going to get some more airflow into the radiator, so better coolant temps and everything. But otherwise, we're done with this install. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and it was kind of helpful for anybody that's installing their intercooler of any brand. Honestly, it's pretty similar for each brand of intercooler. So hopefully this video was helpful. If it was, make sure to drop a like down below, comment your thoughts, and subscribe for more videos like this one. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace. It looks so nice. I was like back and I was like, holy shit. Oh, <laughs> look at that. You know it looks nice. <laughs> Jonas. <laughs> I'm gonna run away. <laughs> Ha <laughs> <laughs>